All right, how's it going, everyone? Today we're going to try out this new premium nib in the Kiwiko Student Pen. And uh, as you can see, it scribbles very satisfyingly, very nice. Uh... Hey, my name is Peter. Today's video is sponsored by Appeals. Cool fabric stickers. Stick it, remove it, and reuse it. They have a gift-giving giveaway going right now. Register with your email to enter, no purchase necessary. 20 people will be selected to receive a $25 gift card. Plus, any of the Create Your Own Appeals are 20% off right now. You can see I have some of my own art on this sticker. Just upload it to the website, ship it to yourself, decorate your life. Right, so you can see I've got three of these pens right here, actually four of these new Kawiko student pens, which is supposed to be kind of nostalgic, I think, um, to the history. Look, when I first started getting into fountain pens, it was a new, exciting, different thing for me because fountain pens seemed so much different and kind of old fashioned and there was some exciting novelty to it, right? But I started seeing a trend, mostly from German commenters, love all of you, by the way, who are, people were like, Peter, why are you so excited about these fountain pens? We had to use these all the time in school. You know, they made us write with them. And um, so maybe that's what this is kind of a, supposed to be sort of a callback to. Uh, they're called student pens? I don't know. Did, is this what y'all's pens used to look like? when you had to use them in school, I don't know. They do look kind of cool, but they're also, as you can see here, I have my, um, the new Gold Spot magazine came out, by the way. By the way, if you got it, you might notice that I was featured in an article here. I'll post a link in the description. It's a pretty interesting read, well-written. They have an online version of it, so check the description for that if you want to read it. And then I think if we, this is good eye candy, by the way, if you just like looking at different pens. It's dangerous, but uh, fun. I think up here, I saw these. Oh yeah, here we are, Kuiko Student. As you can see, they have um, different themed names for different decades. This one is the 30s Blues Berry. Here we have the 60s Swing Green, the 70s Soul, and the 20s Jazz Brown. I didn't really do those in correct chronological order, but uh, you get the idea. Now these pens come in like, come like this, you unsheath it, you pop it open, and your, your pen is in a cool little thing in here. They're also promoting these premium nibs right now that come in these cool silver cases. And your, your nib comes in this nice little uh, foam slot. So I've got two of these nibs installed. I'm trying to figure out what the difference is between them. Obviously this is just a ballpoint variant of the pen. Just, there's a little twist action there and uh, it does its ballpoint thing and blue ink. Blah. And then here we have are two premium nibs, which I've already installed. They do install very easily. Uh, I will admit, I've, I was very pleased by how easily they install. I'm gonna get ink on my hands, but you just kind of grip and twist. They're threaded on the back here. Usually you do this before they're inked up so you don't get ink on your fingers like I just did. These two nibs are the premium ones. They cost uh, a lot, like 45 bucks, I think. Now these were all sent to me for free. Okay, the pens, the nibs. Quico's like, hey, you wanna try out some pens? And of course I was like, I love trying out pens. Uh, these have the sunburst pattern on them and they say premium on them. Which is, it's so premium. I guess the idea is that there's, that there's steel nibs that are supposed to give the vibe and the quality and the experience, the pleasure of a gold nib. Okay, and then in the description, there's something about um, just the, the more time and handcraftedness and hands-onness that goes into each nib that makes it more expensive. I'm not entirely convinced because I've spent some time writing with both nibs. When these three pens came, uh, one, they all had standard nibs in them, fine, medium, and bold. 
but I got, but they also ship separately to medium premium nibs. So I swapped them out. And now I have three medium nibs, two different premium nibs. So I, I, I can do it simple, easy, like fair comparison, I feel like, right? I can write with both premium nib and then the one standard nib. And they feel pretty similar, to be honest. They all feel great. I'll say that. And, and then if you look at the description of them, it's something about, uh, you know, there's an some there's some like something about an iridium grain, and the the tips are 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 hand polished and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, hmm, forty five dollars is a lot, but if you look up their actual gold nibs, the one because there are gold nibs, and it's a popular thing to make gold out of, but a lot of those are one two hundred dollars. So I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe it's acceptable that this does, doesn't give you an actual gold nib feeling because then who would buy their one or two hundred dollar gold nibs if this was actually the same? I think this premium one that looks golden is maybe gold plated, and then this premium one that looks silvery is just kind of chromed. They're both steel though, but the funny thing is the standard one is also steel, so is it just given less attention than the premium ones? Are they admitting that they slack off on the standard one? They don't try very hard or what's going on here? Maybe maybe it just comes down to how much time and effort they put into nibs and they just know that they would have to charge more if they put as much time and effort as they did into these premium ones. Cause they said like the, the, the nibs, the tips are like hand rounded and stuff like that. And you know, there's lots of blogs out there that go into the details of what all this is, and they show, like, microscopic views of the nibs, and so basically I just want to draw with them. Anyways, as far as the rest of the pen goes, I actually like how they feel. The mo Before this, my favorite Cuico pens were, like, the Cuico Sports, and I think these premium nibs do fit in, like, the Sport AL. The, uh, the, the threading fits in there, so that's cool. I actually might take some of these premium nibs out because... Ooh, ooh, let's try it. I think I have it right here. I'm curious now. These don't come with pistons, but I filled the little empty cartridges they come with. They come with a blue cartridge off, off obviously, which is awful, but um, I used a syringe to fill these little empty cartridges that they also come with. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah, I was going to see if this premium nib fits in the Cuico AL Sport. I'm not going to draw with this Sport. I just want to see if it fits, if it's transferable. Oh yeah, that fits in there very snug and nice. I'm making a terrible mess. I mean, I like the premium nibs, but I've been comparing the standard and the premium, and it's it's not like a, some life-changing difference. In fact, it's an almost a noticeable difference. But if it's a difference, I was reading some blog, some UK pen fountain, UK fountain pen blog or something, and they were their opinion was that it all comes down to quality control. Like there's higher quality control with the premium pens. Hmm. But what, what I want to say is that it, as a whole, these found these student, the student pens, I was, I was going to, at first I was a little skeptical because I was like, mm, they look a little old fashioned, not that exciting. Like, I don't know. I kind of like the different size and shape of these. I was, and they look kind of plasticky too, but the plastic feels solid enough. They don't feel like they're going to break. Um, and even though it is a little old fashioned, maybe the gold highlights, uh, kind of liven it up and make it exciting. Plus I like the colors they've chosen, especially this green one and the orange one. And I mean, it looks great when it's all covered in ink smudges. I'm sure that oh, I'm wiping more on instead of off. Don't worry. It'll, it'll come off. I'll clean it off before I start drawing. Ooh, I'm making it gross, but I like the gold highlights. It looks good. And it feels solid, and I like the number of twists to twist it off, twist it on. It feels snug there. The cap feels good on the back. Just as, as a whole, it feels good in your hand. And uh, you can draw with the cap on or off, unlike the Cuico Sport, 
which uh, you have to put the cap on the back because it's so tiny. But this is, uh, I don't know, it just feels good. I was surprised by how much I liked it because I was a little skeptical. At least it's not boring, old-fashioned torpedo or cigar-shaped pen. I'm just a little bit tired of those. That's probably my least favorite pen shape. I mean, I, won't, I don't hate all those pens. And I really, really, really apologize for making this pen so dirty, but it actually looks kind of cool when it's all filthy like this. It has a little bit of uh, personality or attitude or something. I'm not sure. All right. Let's draw, though. Into the sketchbook we go. Premium nib. Student pen style. Okay, page two in the sketchbook. Pretty exciting, uh, because mostly because page one is out of the way, which is a great feeling. Also, this time I am going to go ahead and someone in the previous video told me that when you add a page to a page that like attaches to it and folds out. It's called a fly page apparently. So we're adding another fly page to this one. I like it, it's like a little extension and I like that the fly page can be uh, like a different size, different shape, even a different material. Like this paper I added was, a, uh, it's a, I added it near the end because I don't really know until near the end of the drawing uh, which direction I wanna go really. Uh, but this piece of paper I added was it, the the pen, the ink feathered and bled a lot more. The paper quality was different, and so the la the lines were a lot bigger and thicker. And uh, I, I feel like at some point in my life, and some point in my artistic journey, that would have bothered me, like oh no, it's ruined sort of deal. But now it's just kind of like oh, that's interesting. I like how that's like different and. It's, it's better to be in a place where you can just like kind of embrace it, enjoy it. And I, I was in a good place when I was drawing this, this picture because, oh, it, it's good when you get there because I was just like sitting there drawing and I felt wonderful thinking, wow, I, I can do no wrong. Okay. Well, as far as the art goes, at least. Right. And I was sitting there and thinking that because sometimes when you start getting into drawing, getting into art, you start learning about it, you start looking up like some art theory and stuff like that. And a lot of that, that stuff can start to take the joy out of art uh, away from you, right? Because you start learning about things like, even simple things like balance and, and uh, line weight or texture, composition, right? And these are all wonderful things that can really help you if you start incorporating them and using them in your drawings, your paintings, or whatever you're doing, right? They're all good. They're all useful. I'm not saying they're not good, but sometimes they can start weighing you down and they start holding you back more than they're helping you, right? So at this point, there, there were a few points of this drawing where I was just pushing all that out of my mouth, all of that out of my mind, and I just felt so good thinking, I can draw anything. I, it's, it was just so liberating to, to know and tell myself I can literally put these lines anywhere in any combination and it's okay. Like there's nothing bad or wrong or incorrect about any combination of lines I put here and it's all very fun. And I don't know if any of that makes sense to any of you, but for me, it's very relaxing and fun and I had a great time doing it. And then it was more towards the end of the drawing, maybe like the last, this, I think I've talked about this phenomenon before, but towards the end of the drawing, I was like, oh, this kind of looks like a mouth. And that's when I added the, uh, the head extension on top with the eyes and stuff. But at the beginning there, for the first half, at least of the drawing, it was just kind of like an abstract clump of lines, me just scribbling away, enjoying the fact that I could, the fact that I could do anything. It's like some sort of drawing, I feel like a, like some, and the little finite, world of that paper and the lines on that paper it's like having infinite powers in that little space i like it i like it a lot also lately i've been enjoying the weather getting a little bit cooler i've been going on walks and actually been you know able to wear like hoodies and wear a hoodie or a jacket in the morning i love hoodies i love jackets sweatshirts uh, of course pants of course i wear i i know i'm a big pants fan but on my walks, I actually have been wearing shorts and stuff during the summer, which is a big transition for me to wear shorts, really for anything. I mean, there've been a lot of summers in my life where I still wore pants, but I've been wearing some shorts, mostly because I you know, got, wanted to get some sunshine on them, soak up some vitamin D. Um, but now, 
I'm enjoying the sweater weather again. Sometimes I wonder how much of my enjoyment and em- embracing the the life of hoodies and jackets and wanting to be able to wear them all the time, even like indoors and stuff. And I know that it's cozy. I know it's cozy, but I think some part of it goes back to me being a little bit insecure with my body. Like it covers up the shape of my body a little bit when you wear a hoodie, right? I feel like maybe I'd be more comfortable with just sitting around in a t-shirt. I don't know. I I feel like lately, maybe like the past 10 years or so, I've put on a few pounds. I I don't think I'm fat, but maybe I've grown into my t-shirts some and they started being a little bit more snug fitting, especially when you sit down, you know, your belly pooches out a little bit. And it's just, uh, I don't know, I'm like, eh, I'd be more comfortable if I could wear a hoodie. And then all of that isn't so obvious. But, I mean, I know, like, I know it's not a big deal. But I guess when it comes to being comfortable, I guess part of being comfortable is not everyone seeing that. But maybe it's like a shortcut to comfort. Because ultimately, being truly comfortable would just being comfortable with my own body and not caring if someone saw that I had a sly belly, right? I don't know. There's something there. I haven't quite reached it. Hopefully I will one day, but I've still been going on a walk every day. I walk for, I walk about three miles every day. I don't know if it's actually three miles. It takes me about 45 minutes. I think I listen to audiobooks and stuff. How, how fast do people walk? No, 45 miles, 45 minutes, three miles. That sounds, that would be a really fast walk, wouldn't it? I don't know. Anyways, I enjoy the walking. I walk mostly during the daytime now before I knew I was talking. I told you some stories about how I was walking at nighttime. I mostly walk during the daytime now unless I was too busy during the day. Then sometimes I walk at night. Oh, but also the weather. I feel like this year the trees have been more vibrant in their color changing than, than, than I can remember. I don't, maybe it's just because new memories are fresher and more vibrant memories, but I almost feel like in some previous years, I specifically, specifically remember thinking, wow, fall wasn't so vibrant this year, or maybe I just wasn't outside, or maybe I wasn't around the trees, or there could have been some other extenuating circumstances, or maybe there is some sort of, you know, alignment of natural things, you know, like combination of, you know, warm or cold weather, um, moisture or humidity or something that makes trees change at the same time or be more or less colorful, right? But this year, at least around me, the trees have been so pretty with the the oranges and yellows and reds. They've been so bright and I've been loving it. It's been beautiful. And I don't know, it seems like typically that's something that's, you know, you have to go to like What's that place up in uh, Maine? Or it's like some Acadia National Park or something. Some places, they they like hinge all of their tourism on the pretty fall trees. But it's it's happening here, right around me. I just go for a walk, open my eyes, soak it all in. It's beautiful, so nice. All right, let me know what you think of this drawing and what the caption should be. For me, I think the caption is something like "Ah," uh, but really a lot more louder and like I'm screaming. Um. Or maybe it's something like trying to talk, and this is all. These are all how it all comes out when it's not how you me- meant it, or um, I don't know. I'm open. It's it's open to interpretations. It's not supposed to mean one specific thing. That's why I don't usually title my drawings because because I don't usually go into it with one specific drawing. I mean, one specific idea. I feel like it's a little bit. I don't know if dishonest is the right word, but to. Give a drawing one specific title is narrowing it down too much when I went into it very openly, right? Anyways, um, see you later. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Hope there are some pretty trees near you. Uh, of course, it could you could be in the Southern Hemisphere, and that means in the Southern Hemisphere, do the trees change near you And when it's spring here? Hmm, it's fun to think about. Some places, when I used to live in the Philippines, the trees, there was like no discernible fall or autumn, and the trees would all just randomly change on their own personal cycles. They just, whenever they felt like it. 
So we could never get any really big leaf piles going because it was only like one tree's worth at a time. Anyways, all right. Bye, everyone.